So we've seen several interesting applications in healthcare. I'll give you three examples. One is for a payer, and they have found that to get beyond uh, dealing with cost reduction as simply a procurement game, uh, that it's about standardizing care. That actually in some disease area is the difference, can make a difference of almost 30%. Another is uh, providers. Uh, we have seen some providers early in the game right now that are starting to take on more risk as part of becoming more accountable care organizations. And they have already started in partnership with others uh, to understand what drives quality cost outcomes and are starting to then put in place mechanisms within their institutions uh, led by the chief medical officer to align and standardize the practice of care. Another example is uh, pharmaceutical. They have found that they need to provide real world evidence of their products, not just what comes out of the clinical trials that they have sponsored, but that it works so in the past, it was good enough if you got it past the FDA, right? Now you have to convince them that this actually has an incremental benefit to the existing practice of care. And we've seen some real examples of uh, pharmaceutical companies that were able to use this to get to a higher tier of pricing because they were able to show in the real world this had better impact. The starting point uh, for what companies might want to do really starts with being clear about the case for action. That's based on the value for them. Right? We've seen a lot of people that uh, run off and start to build partnerships for getting data or running around uh, trying to do a bunch of analytics, uh, which can be a, a, a wasted uh, effort if you're not clear how and where that's going to be used. So if you're a provider that's suddenly at risk for the quality of care, then let's understand what are the drivers of that quality and let's understand what's the data we need and the analytics that goes into supporting that. The second aspect is uh, really getting your arms around uh, some of our internal practices and internal objections. Now, uh, the reason I say that, in healthcare, that's a particularly important issue because uh, the gold standard for doing anything is a randomized clinical trial that's backed up by a, a paper in a peer-reviewed journal, right? And now we're suddenly uh, reviewing data. We don't know what quality it is, coming off of clearing houses, lab results, lots of errors, right? A lot of pushback around whether that is voodoo science. And so being able to address that this is not a substitution of clinical research that's randomized, this is a complement to it. It has a couple of features that you can't get by just doing research in the normal way. Uh, you can get at much larger population sets, so you can slice and dice it in ways that make sense. You can personalize it, understand variations by individuals. The ability to address that head on and say, that, well, this is going to happen anyway. You already have a lot of people poking into this. Let's start to address it in a way that uh, makes sense of it in the right way and can be used in a way that unlocks value. One of the challenges is how do we get to a commonly agreed upon methodology so that if it follows that methodology, it has credibility and a number of stakeholders can use that to drive change. And the reason why this becomes important in healthcare is that it's interdependent stakeholders. It's not like a financial institution where you just have to make the decision internally. If you're a payer, you've got to convince providers. If you're a pharma company, you have to convince regulators and payers. Right? So there's a lot riding on people agreeing to this is the, the, a legitimate outcome. Another aspect is uh, data. There's a risk that data gets balkanized, that it's in different places, people start to erect barriers around it, uh, or you get a little bit of a monopoly around it and you're not able to use it in a way that, that makes sense. 
uh, either because of privacy concerns. In Europe, there are a lot of uh, concerns around how readily available this should be made, right? Some of those concerns are clearly in uh, the U.S. as well. So the ability to get to a place where there is a form of data commons where you can address the private concerns on one hand and yet create the right value proposition for the users, including the patients, so that this is seen as a positive outcome. Because if you don't get that right, you could easily imagine this as uh, not going anywhere quickly.